All right, so the last mouse pad video that I did did way better than I expected on the channel. It was about a year and a half ago and it's somehow like a top 10 video. Uh, I don't know how, but yeah, there is evidently a lot of interest in mouse pads, which is good because I'm interested in it too. I've tried a bunch more since that video, as you can see. So I thought we'd do the same thing. Let's go through them one by one and I'll let you guys know which ones are really good and which ones I didn't really like. And yeah, mouse pads are still definitely something that I get asked about quite a lot. And I think it's definitely a rabbit hole similar to say mechanical keyboards or gaming mice themselves because the different experiences that you can get, the different aiming experiences and the characteristics between all of these different pads that are out there, even in this small pile here, is actually pretty insane. If you're going to compare something, you know, as an extreme example, something really slow like a Zowie GSR to something super fast like an Artisan Raiden, for someone who isn't really into mouse pads, they both look like just normal cloth pads. But in reality, the aiming feel and characteristics are completely different. I will definitely preface this video by saying though that I still think that you can get extremely good on the majority of mouse pads that are out there, even the ones that are super basic at your local game store that you can buy for like 30 bucks, like a G640. Those are pads that pros are using and they win tournaments on them. They have extremely good aim on them. This video is mostly just sharing kind of what I feel most comfortable on and kind of the different experiences that you can get on either pad. But again, you can be good with pretty much anything in this list. So kicking things off, we have one pad which I was really keen to try this year, and that is the Zowie GSR SE Rouge, I think it is pronounced. But yeah, this is a really solid all-round pad. This is definitely one of those mouse pads that you can use for pretty much any first-person shooter out there with the different styles of aiming, whether it's Valorant or Overwatch. This thing has you pretty well covered. It's a smooth control pad. It is fast enough for something like Overwatch if you're playing like really fast DPS. It's definitely got enough glide for that. But then again, there's definitely enough friction that you can hold angles and hold that kind of static cursor position quite comfortably. Most people would describe this one as a smooth control pad, which I think is pretty accurate. And the surface finish as well is one of the highlights of this pad. It's just super smooth. Uh, you don't feel like any grain or like fibers or anything like that. It's just a really nice smooth finish. So on your skin, on your forearm as well, if you're doing swipes and stuff like that, you're not going to have any problems there. It's like one of the best things that I found about this pad. Uh, but yeah, really great all rounder. It's kind of like the G640 in that way. Like the G640, you can use it for pretty much any game out there. And you know, lots and lots of pros do. Pro players use the G640 for Valorant, Rainbow Six, Overwatch. It's like one of those really good all-rounder pads. I would say the GSRSE Rouge is definitely more control focused though. So just keep that in mind. There's just a bit more friction. So yeah, personally, I really enjoyed using this pad. It's like a really, really solid pad. Uh, the reason I didn't you know, stick with it is because one, it is red, as dumb as that sounds. You know, it's a pretty cool pattern. If this was black, it'd be pretty dope. But more importantly, the glide and the stopping power, I'm looking for something that just has a bit more smoothness, you know, less stopping power, less friction. For games like Overwatch and Apex, which is what I'm playing most of the time, to be honest, I felt like the GSRC Rouge just had a little bit more friction and stopping power than I'd like. Next up, we have the Skypad 3.0. And man, I have a love-hate relationship with this thing because First off, let's just appreciate how good this thing looks. Like it is super clean, all black, hard pad, full glass construction. It's like the stealthiest mouse pad solution for your setup. I really wish I could have this thing on my desk. So yeah, I guess we should start there. It is glass, it is a hard pad. There is no compression at all. And most of the time it feels like your mouse is just like floating on the pad. There's, you know, there's a bit of like a nano texture to the pad. There is a little bit of feedback. I think that's mostly for the sensor, to be honest. So no stopping power, no control, just this unlimited glide. Uh, but I actually like that quite a bit. This unrestricted approach to aiming, zero stopping power, just pure input. I'm glad at least one company is out there doing it. You know, you can do microscopic adjustments and movement on this thing, which are just not possible on most cloth pads. The reason I don't use it though is because of how grippy this thing is on your skin after you use it for more than five minutes. The perspiration just grips super, super hard. Your forearm just becomes basically glued to the pad. Now I could just wear a compression sleeve, you know, that would help most of my issues. I could also wear some sort of glove because I would need to cover my hand. My hand gets stuck on this quite a lot too, but I just feel like I would need to be an extremely high skill level to start wearing that much equipment 
to actually play games, you know? If I was putting like 12 hours plus into Overwatch, Apex, trying to go pro, something like that, that is something that I would maybe try, but uh, honestly, I'm not even close to that. I am seriously waiting for the day though, where we can have a sky pad with some kind of alien technology, which doesn't stick to your skin as you start to warm up, uh, because I'll honestly switch to it in a heartbeat. Until then though, I'll be sticking to cloth pads. Now on the complete opposite end of the spectrum, we have the Extrafy GPZ-1, which is also known as the Rocket Jump Ninja Mouse Pad. Uh, Extrafy sent this over when they released their wireless MZ-1s. And to be honest, I have not had a lot of time using this thing. As soon as I felt how slow it was, uh, yeah, it basically just went on the shelf. You know, I played a few games with it. I've got some mouse cam footage as well, which I'll show you guys. But yeah, this thing is so slow and that's just not really what I'm looking for in a mouse pad. Now that absolute ton of stopping power, it does actually have a plus side. If you're someone who is pretty jittery on their setup, uh, maybe you find yourself over aiming and constantly making mistakes, a super high friction pad like this might actually be what you're after, especially for games like CS and Valorant. There are a lot of pro players that love super slow pads because they give you a ton of stability. As a consequence though, because you need to overcome so much friction to get the mouse moving, things like micro adjustments and small movements are really difficult. So as a bit of an example, Soldier 76 in Overwatch 2, uh, hit scan tracking at medium to long range, you kind of feel that your cursor is continuously stopping and starting as you fight the friction on the pad. Now compare that to the Artisan Raiden, which we'll get to in a moment. This is a much faster pad, uh, still a cloth pad, but small mouse movements on it are a lot easier. The input is a lot more continuous, but on the flip side of this, there's much less stability. So making mistakes and jitters, they're a lot more common. So you can definitely get extremely good on a super solo pad like the GPZ-1. As I mentioned, a lot of pros in CS and the Valorant scene really like slow pads like this because you can just switch and hold angles so, so quickly. But for more tracking based games, uh, I kind of feel like the pad is constantly just fighting you and holding back your inputs, which I really don't like. And as someone who has already tried a Zowie GSR, which this is very, very similar to, I had kind of moved on from that, you know, for a, a more faster tracking experience. All right, but next up we have the Lethal Gaming Gear Mercury. And this is a pad which honestly didn't see a lot of time at my setup. Since I had already tried the Artisan Heian and the Razor Strider, this felt very similar to me. You know, I had kind of already moved on from that texture of pad. This is very similar. In fact, I would say it's even just a little bit worse. The kind of sandpapery feel that you get from this, it's not as like textured in terms of like how high the bumps are, like on the Razor Strider, for example. This has much more of a just dry, coarse kind of sandpapery feel which I honestly just don't really like. I will say though, in terms of like aiming mechanics, in terms of how much glide it has, how much stopping power it has, how cursor input feels and stuff like that, it's a really, really good pad. Like just as with the Heian and the Strider, that kind of fast input experience where the pad isn't restricting your inputs as much, but then you still have that little bit of stopping power to, you know, hold an angle or, you know, just to buffer out all of those jitters. But again, for me, it's the surface finish, which is just, not it, man. Like, it's like a dry sandpaper. If you're doing vertical adjustments, especially, like, of course, if you're using fingertip grip, it's fine, but sometimes you need more room and, you know, any hand movement is just not great on this pad at all. It's frustrating for me because I otherwise like this pad uh, quite a lot in terms of the responsiveness, the glide, how fast it feels, and the amount of stopping power I think is pretty much perfect for fast-paced games. But if this had like the surface finish of a GSRC Rouge or an Artisan Raiden, it would be pretty much perfect. Next up, we have the Vaxi Zygon PA, uh, which is a really easy one because it is basically the same as the GSRC Rouge. I don't know if I'm just not good enough to tell the difference, but they legit feel like the same pad, maybe a little bit different. I feel like the PA is like, just a little bit faster now that I'm, you know, comparing them here side by side. The GSRC Rouge has like a little bit more stopping power, but you know, I'm really grasping at straws here. I would say just pick whichever one you think looks better. Um, the density as well, compression, basically the same. And the surface texture as well is just extremely close. I would say the PA is just maybe just a little bit faster and that's pretty much it. So of course, everything that I said about the Zowie, you can just apply to the Vaxi as well. Uh, it's a smooth control pad, really one of those pads which you can use just for any first person shooter out there. The amount of friction and the amount of glide and stopping power is just 
pretty much perfect, to be honest. For a lot of people, I think this is like kind of the style of pad that most people want. Maybe just a little bit on the slower end for my personal preferences, but otherwise just a really solid experience. Next up though, we have the mouse pad, which I've personally clocked the most hours on, which is the Artisan Heiati Otsu. So if it looks a little bit grotty, a little bit well-worn, like, you know, you can see an imprint of my arm here, which I'm not sure if you can see that on camera or you can see it on the second camera. And then you can see a bit of fading here from the mouse glides. Not really affecting performance, it's probably due for a wash, but durability otherwise is actually pretty good here. But the main reason I've been just sticking with this pad is that I'd say for tracking based games, Overwatch, Apex, just the amount of glide and stopping power that you have here, it's just a really good balance. So it's a decently fast pad, you know, especially in the mid variant that you have here, there's not much compression at all and not much drag, it's basically like a hard cloth pad and you have a ton of freedom to move around on this thing. Micro adjustments and small Small tracking movements are no problem at all, and all at the same time you have enough friction to hold a static position easily enough. So yeah, Heiati Otsu, I can definitely, definitely recommend this one. It's an extremely good mouse pad from Artisan, it's the one that I've used the most, and I'd say the glide speed here again is definitely biased towards more fast paced, more tracking oriented games where you're just continuously moving your mouse. I should also mention that Artisan have these three tiers of thicknesses for most of their mouse pads. You've got uh, mid, soft and extra soft. So ranging from the firmest and the kind of hardest to the most kind of plushy soft experience. So on mid, you have just no compression at all. Soft gives you a bit of compression, but not too much. I think this is gonna be the sweet spot for most people if I'm honest. And then extra soft is like, a pretty like plushy, you know, compression experience. Like I haven't really felt another mouse pad that is this soft. Also, the softer that you go, the more friction you're gonna have, the slower the mouse pad will get, even within the same model of mouse pad. So if you have an Artisan Zero, for example, the Zero Mid is gonna be a lot faster than a Zero in Extra Soft. Now on the Soft, and especially on the Extra Soft, you can kind of press into the pad to create this kind of experience where you're getting more stability and more friction. So this, for example, is the Artisan Raiden Extra Soft. It is an extremely fast pad. It's the second fastest pad in the Artisan lineup. And for the most part, yeah, there's not much friction here, but because it's so plushy, you can now push into the pad to give you a bit more friction. And a lot of people, uh, especially for tactical shooters like Valorant, CSGO, uh, it's something that is used quite a bit. You press into the pad, hold an angle, lift up, uh, all of a sudden you've got more friction. It's kind of this variable friction experience depending on how hard you are pressing into it. But it can also be a bit of a bad thing because if you're someone who panic aims, you know, you get into a tense 1v1 scenario, all of a sudden your grip starts to firm up and you're like, you know, squeezing into the pad when you don't really mean to, all of a sudden you now have more friction than you are used to. And this is actually the main reason why I switched from a Hayati Otsu in soft to one in mid because on a mid, there is no pressing into the pad to get more friction. I mean, there's a little bit, but nowhere near as much as an extra soft pad. So if you're trying to decide between a mid and an extra soft, consider if you really need that mechanic where you're like really pushing into the pad to get that additional friction. Most people honestly probably don't need to do that. I would say most people should go for like a soft or a mid. That way the amount of friction is just completely continuous and consistent and it's not affected pretty much at all by how hard you are pressing into the pad. So yeah, for the most part, uh, this is my main pad right here. It's the Artisan Hayati Otsu in mid, but I have been using the Raiden Extra Soft quite a bit recently, probably for the last couple of weeks, just for something different, something, uh, you know, for a bit of fun, a bit of a novel experience. So there's not much friction or stopping power on this thing at all. As you can see, the glide is just ridiculously quick. And so that's why it's been, you know, pretty fun to switch to every now and then. Uh, and the surface texture as well is so, so nice. Part of it feeling like a cloud is that you just have so much movement for your arm and there's none of that grabby feeling, which I've talked about previously, you know, I don't like at all, like on the sky pad or on the LGD Mercury. Here, it is the complete opposite where you just have unlimited freedom. But yeah, I've been enjoying this. You know, you can change direction extremely quick on this thing. Small tracking movements as well are insanely easy and free, just a tad easier than what I found on the Heiati Otsu. And it's just an excellent pad if you want to continuously move your mouse without the pad kind of getting in the way. Now, if you're someone who is already, you know, kind of jittery and a little bit unstable with your mouse uh, on your current setup, then this is just gonna make it even worse because there is so little 
friction and so little stopping power, it's not gonna be kind of filtering out all of those little micro jitters and maybe even like little hand spasms that your hand does. I even find myself doing it from time to time. I'm not even sure if I'm better on the Raiden than I am on slower pads, but I will say I do have more fun using it, especially that surface texture and finish. Like this feels insanely nice on your hand, even with really fast swipes, your skin just glides all the way over it without a problem. Uh, just really wish they made it in black and not brown. Now, something else uh, I want to mention here is that all of your mouse pad choices, uh, they matter a lot less as gaming mice become lighter and lighter. So the lighter your mouse is, the less your mouse pad choice really matters. And that just has to do with the weight of the mouse and the amount of friction that's going to be imposed on the surface. So for example, you know, a bit of an extreme example, I can use the slowest mouse pad in my collection, which is the GPZ-1, but using it with my 23 gram prototype mouse, it's actually a pretty fine experience. Like it actually feels totally fine. To be honest, it doesn't even feel that slow. If on the other hand, you're using something that's like 70 grams, 80 grams, or you know, even higher for whatever reason, uh, the differences among these mouse pads are gonna be a lot more substantial. I will say even for something like a super light, which is 60 grams, and that's what I've used for most of the mouse cam footage that you're seeing, there is definitely enough of a difference between all of the mouse pads that are out there in terms of like an aiming experience and the amount of friction and glide. It's just as we approach mice that are 50, 40 or even 30 grams in total weight, uh, I'd recommend not thinking about mouse pads too much. Now, if you're after more of a comprehensive list of different mouse pads and, you know, pretty much all of the ones that are out there, I would definitely recommend Boardsy here on YouTube, especially his tier lists. Uh, yeah, it is kind of insane to think about how many mouse pads that guy has tried. Definitely check that out if you want to delve into the rabbit hole a little bit deeper. But yeah, that's pretty much it for me. If you want to check any of these out, I will leave them linked down below. As always, a huge thanks for watching and I'll see you all in the next one.